If you have not yet already, can you help us out by taking our annual listener survey? It takes just a minute or two and helps us better understand our audience better. You can find that over at mjtodaymedia.com slash survey. Thanks so much. This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by our friends over at Cureleaf, one of the nation's leading providers of adult use and medical marijuana products with 88 local dispensaries, 22 cultivation sites, and 30 processing facilities, all serving up more than 350,000 registered patients and customers in 23 operating states. Learn more about all the good work done by everyone over at Cureleaf at their website at cureleaf.com with Cureleaf spelled C-U-R-A-L-E-A-F. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, August 25th, 2020, and you're tuned in to episode 971 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Guthrie, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. We return to a story we've covered a couple of times here in the daily in recent days and weeks, and that's the record-breaking California wildfires. We've talked about how those wildfires hit California marijuana farms particularly hard, where first farmers see their farms burn down only to be unable to rebuild since they can't buy business insurance. David Downs has a good story in Leafly that revisits that situation with the story of a 39-year-old farmer who nearly lost his life last week in the SCU Lightning Complex fire, which now ranks as the second largest fire in California in recorded history, with no signs yet of stopping. We're making this the top story today because I want to impress upon all of you the hugely historic nature of this year's fires. Last year, by this time, around 56,000 acres of California had, so far, burned up during the fire season. Right now, more than 1.4 million acres have burned. 56,000 last year, 1.4 million this year. A good way to imagine that jump is to think about if your salary grew that quickly from 56,000 a year, one year to 1.4 million the next. That's a big jump. But in this case, the money is on fire. 1.4 million acres is more than six times the size of Chicago, which is pretty damn big itself. California is literally burning up. Kyle Yeager over at Marijuana Moment has story number two and three today. First up with a pickup of news that Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris recently said that a Biden administration would decriminalize marijuana. Senator Harris was asked about her history as a prosecutor in California and talked about how marijuana would be decriminalized if she and Joe Biden were elected while discussing police reforms in an interview with ABC News. During that same interview, former Vice President Biden said, quote, we're going to make sure that we change the entire system in the way that we deal with criminal justice from punishment to rehabilitation. No one should go to jail because they have a drug addiction, unquote. Pop over to Kyle's story here for more and to watch the video yourself. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com. To Vermont, we go for our final top story with Kyle detailing the latest progress being made by state lawmakers to pass a bill setting up a taxed and regulated marijuana sales program. Two years after they signed into law legislation allowing for the possession, growing, sharing, and use of adult use marijuana. Senate Bill 54 has been long in process in Vermont and is being worked over right now by a bicameral conference committee tasked with merging the two versions of the bill that were passed by the House and and Senate. Vermont lawmakers met last week and, as Kyle is reporting, came to agreements on a number of compromises with a few left to be worked out. In particular, a seatbelt amendment we talked about last week that would allow police to pull people over for not being belted up. So the broad update here is that legal adult use sales in Vermont is close, but not yet closed. Another good one to add to your list to read if you need more details here. Those are the top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. 
Before we blitz out in headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, Cureleaf, one of the nation's leading providers of adult use and medical marijuana products with 88 local dispensaries, 22 cultivation sites, and 30 processing facilities, all serving up more than 350,000 registered patients and customers in 23 operating states. Cureleaf is also one of the country's faster-growing multi-state cannabis operators, now with shops to be found coast-to-coast. You can learn more about Cureleaf's national reach and dive into more on their stock, traded up on the Canadian Securities Exchange under the symbol Cura, on their website at cureleaf.com. And if you have not yet, open up vetscp.org to familiarize yourself with the work done by the folks over at the Veterans Cannabis Project, which works to expand medical marijuana access by military veteran patients. You can donate to that cause at their website and learn more about how you can get involved at vetscp.org. That's V-E-T-S-C-P.org. Big thanks to everyone at Curly for supporting great organizations like the Veterans Cannabis Project and for helping us keep the news lights running. All right, time for the Blitz. Multi-state cannabis operator Green Thumb Industries, or GTI as it's better known, has filed paperwork to raise up to $150 million in funding via the sale of 10 million subordinate voting shares. GTI said it will use the capital raised for general funding purposes and may use some of it for acquisitions. GTI currently holds just under 100 retail cannabis licenses, employs 1,900 people, and has operations in 12 U.S. states. The Canadian province of Manitoba started taking applications for new marijuana dispensary operators this summer and is, as Marijuana Business Daily is reporting, in the process of rolling out a number of new shops, with one just opening up in August and another just being awarded its license. That brings the total number of licensed dispensaries in Manitoba, which has a population of 1.4 million people, to just 33. By way of comparison, that's more than twice the number of people living in the city of Denver, Colorado, which had an estimated 364 dispensaries back in 2018. So Denver had half the population of Manitoba, but 12 times as many dispensaries. This is a great slice of how slowly Canada in general has rolled out legal cannabis. Matt Lamers has a good story up at Marijuana Business Daily examining the growth of the legal marijuana industry on the island nation of Jamaica. Jamaica has been working in recent years to install a more progressive cannabis policy, and Matt's piece dives into the number of business licenses issued so far and the just-announced statistic that domestic licensed operators have conducted $1.4 million of marijuana trade between themselves between May of last year and July of this year. If you have Jamaica on your industry radar, and you probably should, this is a good one to read in full today. The Washington State Liquor and Control Board is looking to hire a smell regulator to help oversee the state's legal cannabis growers and to study if the smell of cannabis cultivation has any kind of negative health impacts. A law passed earlier this year in Washington calls for the creation of the Marijuana Odor Task Force to study the question, and the Liquor and Cannabis Board is responding by hiring outside experts. Applications for the opening closed yesterday, and a winner is expected to be announced on September 4th. This is a very new field of study overall, so not a bad little storyline to have some awareness of. Chris Moore, writing in Mary Jane, writes about a small head shop in Denver, Colorado, that was denied access to a local city program funded by the federal government to hand out personal protective equipment to small businesses to help stop the transmission of the coronavirus. The Meadowlark 64 head shop was turned away from the city program because it happens to sell CBD oil products, which are legal though only mostly. In a vast sea of criminal incompetence from the Trump administration in terms of its lack of a national coronavirus plan, this is a very tiny little wave, but a telling one nonetheless. Keeping our sights up in Colorado, Thomas Mitchell has a relatively more positive story with a number of Colorado towns and cities considering more progressive reforms to their own local cannabis laws. Local governments everywhere are facing budget shortfalls due to the coronavirus, so it makes sense that Colorado would see more interest among towns in raising more cannabis revenue. On the plate for possible adoptions in cities and towns like Denver, Aurora, and Broomfield are regulations allowing for expanded marijuana delivery, more social equity licensing, and more processing and cultivation facilities allowed. 
We end the day's news on a light note with the announcement that marijuana industry pioneer Steve D'Angelo has signed a deal with a book publisher to create a new series of cannabis-themed coloring books for adults. The publishing brand Really Big Coloring Books will develop, along with Steve, the new line of coloring books, which from the sounds of it will include a number of titles. Very cool news. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with you again tomorrow morning with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interweb, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, Curaleaf, and to our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.